How many of you are free this morning? Say amen. amen. Uh, there's a lot to be grateful for, and as we've been in our study in Galatians, uh, it seems like they were struggling with this thought of being free and some other things that were grabbing a hold of their attention. And so we'll be in Galatians, if you'll turn there, chapter 3 this morning. I don't know about um, each of you this week, but I know there'd be some time in your life that you've been totally confused at something, probably just totally confused. I don't know what it was that kind of brought the confusion on. I don't know if it was a project you were working on or not, uh, but I was working on our house for Stace and I about 10 years ago, and I took on plumbing, which I should not have because there's a Brown County test of if you can hold the pressure or not. Anybody had to, to do plumbing before in Brown County? Anybody? Okay, a couple of you, and I was not prepared for what I was about to go through because I was very confused on why I was losing pressure and I couldn't find it, but finally we found it, and I was just overwhelmed. Anybody been there before? Just overwhelmed on a project and you're totally confused. And so this morning I want to have a little bit of fun with you. I want you to take your phone out real quick, all right? Take your phone out real quick. You might be seated by someone or you might be close to someone, Uh, But I want you to take either a selfie or a personal picture of your best confused face, all right? Your best confused face, all right? Take the best one. I thought about doing a photo competition with this, maybe giving away a door prize or something about that. No, I won't do that this morning. But your most confused face. All right, everybody look at the next person next to you and go, you look totally confused. Come on, a little bit louder than that. You look totally confused. I'm watching over here. Totally confused. There's a lot of things that bring confusion in our life, and a lot of times we're just a little confused, and then sometimes we're really confused. But here in Galatians, uh, there's some confusion going on. We've been talking about some of that, and some of that has been about whether salvation is by grace or is it by works, and is it a combination of the two, or how does that work? And we clarified that it is by grace. And it is by faith that we trust in Christ. And even today, there's some confusion right off the bat in this chapter, in chapter 3. If you do not have a handout this morning, if you would, just lift your hand up. A couple guys in the back can give those to you. If you do not have a handout, I'd love for you to take some notes this morning. Just slip your hand up. Anybody? Okay. Uh, If you do, just, just get that. Those guys will help you out. I want us to be able to follow along, and not only to just follow along on Sunday, but I truly believe that throughout the week, There's one up front here, guys, one up front here too as well, Ed, right here. Uh, A lot of times throughout the week, I don't know how this all works for you, but it seems like God just kind of sets things in order in my life. He like puts things in order that I need on Sunday, and sometime throughout the week I get another piece of information that I need in my spiritual walk, and it seems like another day and another day and another day, and it just kind of all fits together. Are you with me? Say amen. And so it's something about Sundays that connect to the rest of your week. And I don't know how the Spirit of God will connect it all, but He just has a way of doing that in our lives. And I want us to be able to, and I want to be able to, experience this life of freedom in our series, Live Free. You see, we can all be totally confused. And maybe you'll uh, post that picture later today if if you think you can handle it. And say, today I was reminded that I can be confused, but God brings a lot of clarity through his word. And we're free to continue. That's our thought today. We're free to continue. Say it with me. Free to continue. There's five things I want us to be free to continue in. And the first thing I want to bring up is the issue that's happening here in this passage. Do they truly walk by faith in his grace? That was, that was the thing that Paul was going uh, towards, and that's what he was trying to bring uh, the, the thoughts around in this, in this third chapter that we're looking at today, do we truly believe that we can be righteous before God? Many times we pump ourselves up after a worship service and we feel great. Don't you feel good right now? Because we've been in the presence of the Lord. We've been expressing our adoration and our, and our affection to Him for what He has done for us. And so we feel close to Him. But sometimes in our daily walk, we seems like that kind of deteriorates and we don't feel like we're righteous before God. But in this passage, uh, Paul's going to address how these things can be and how we can be righteous before God. I want us to realize this first thought, and it's not in your notes, but I'd ask you to jot it to the side Your faith grows in God's grace. Your faith grows in God's grace. How is your faith going to grow? How is my faith going to grow? It's going to grow when it's in God's grace. What all does that mean? We're going to get into that a little bit. 
Jesus doesn't give us just enough grace at salvation to get us started and then ask us to just figure it out the rest of the way and send us on on our way and expect us to do some things that are worthy of his grace. He does not do that. Our salvation, as we said, is is a gift, completely unearned. There is a starting point of genuine faith, yes, but we're to grow in that grace and grow in that faith. seems like somewhere along the way in our Christian life that we start taking on the responsibility that it's up to me. Everybody say, it's not up to me. It's not up to you. God's grace is not dependent upon you, but God is asking you to step out in faith And so when we look at being Christ-like as not depending on our good efforts, and Paul is going to address this in the very first couple verses, if you'll look with me here, verses 1 through 5. And I want you to feel Paul's um, story, and I want you to feel his his life experience here. I want you to feel what it was like in this this particular passage of what these God's people are going through. And he says, oh, foolish Galatians. He says, I want you to know, Galatians, you're confused right now. You're confused. You're, you're not, you're not, you don't have it together. And he says, I'm going to tell you how you don't have it together. He says, who hath bewitched you? Who has tricked you? Who has set, set this spell upon you? He said, you're confused. It's like you have a spell upon you. That you should not obey the truth. How many of you want to obey the truth? Say amen. We want to obey the truth, but what is that truth? And here he says, you've, you've been misled. You've been confused. It says before, whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. He's basically saying, you've missed the message. Anybody ever miss a text message? You're like, oh man, I forgot to reply. Well, they're missing the message here. He's trying to get them to see the message. Verse 2, this only what I learn of you. As I watch you and as I see you, it says, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? It's just by simple faith. Which one was it? He's he's asking lots of questions here. Are you so foolish? Are you so misunderstanding? Having begun in the Spirit, you began in the Spirit. Are you now made perfect by the law? Have you believed the lie? Here's the lie. The lie is that you have to obey the law to receive God's blessing. That was what they were going after, and he's clarifying this with with multiple questions. Verse 4, have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he says, is this all worth nothing? Uh, The the past, all you've been through, what is it all worth? And he says in verse 5, he therefore that ministereth to you. Notice these words. This is a great verse. Kind of brings a conclusion here. Um, He therefore that ministereth to you, and this is the Spirit. Everybody say the Spirit. The Spirit ministereth to you today. And not just today, but each day of your life. He ministereth to you. And worketh miracles among you. How many of you um, long for some miracles in life? Say amen. I don't know what those miracles could be a small one, could be a big one, could be a lot of different forms of that miracle, but he said, He worketh miracles among you. Um, Doth he it be by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He says, I want you to know which one is it, and he says this by faith, and we'll bring more clarity to that. In these few verses, I want us to see this, that we're free to continue, and your fill-in-the-blank is in faith. We're free to continue in faith. Don't just stop now in faith, but continue in faith. You're free to keep moving forward. Everybody say, move forward. We've got to move forward in faith. We can't just get faith and say, okay, I'm going to use my faith for salvation. I'm going to stop there. But God has more steps of faith. We're stepping out in in faith even in these next weeks, getting ready for our outreach to the sportsmen of our community. We're stepping out in faith. We've been been led by the Spirit, as it said even in these other verses, that we've been led by the Spirit to do something, and we're asking God to show us by faith what we should do and how we should do it so that we can reach someone for Him. You see, they missed the message. We don't want to miss the message. A couple of clarifications. There's a difference between the principle of law and the principle of grace. Law is this that you are blessed and grow spiritually by earning or deserving it. The law of grace is this, that you are blessed and grow spiritually by believing and receiving. Can you say believing and receiving? I don't know what you need to believe him for, and I don't know what you need to receive from him, but that is how you do it under grace. You fill in the blank this morning. God works with us under the covenant of grace, so we should not respond on the principle of law. 
When God is trying to give to us blessing and growth through believing and receiving, don't, uh, don't us as a person respond by trying to earn it or trying to be good, of, good enough for it or deserving of it. See, the deception here is from Satan himself to move Christians off track. Um, if he cannot think about this, if he cannot stop us from being saved by faith, think about it. If Satan can't stop us from being saved by faith, then he's going to attempt to to hinder our blessing and to hinder our growth and to hinder our maturity by faith. Does that make sense? If he is going, if he can't do anything about your step of faith for salvation, he's definitely going to do something about your step of of faith and your growth and then also in your blessing. How many of you want to be blessed? We all long for God's blessing and it can come in a lot of different formats. We long for his blessing. We long for growth and maturity. God supplied the Holy Spirit in response to our faith. And we talked about this in verse 5, how the miracles happen. They happen by faith. God poured poured out His grace and poured out His Holy Spirit because we and they also believed in Jesus. Can I... Can I just encourage you with this, that every story of salvation is this, Jesus plus nothing. Can you say that? Jesus plus nothing. You and I are nothing except apart from Jesus. Jesus plus nothing, that's what describes our story. Even Jesus himself, when he completed the work of salvation in John chapter 19, verse 30, on the cross, he made his own announcement. It was three words. What was it? It is finished. Jesus plus nothing. God did not give us the Holy Spirit to simply be a spectator to cheer us on. He gave the Holy Spirit to us to initiate and to produce good works through us. How many of you felt the Holy Spirit this week encouraging you and trying to produce in you a work that would be pleasing to him? Did you feel that this week? Lift your hand of of thanks. Can you do that? A a hand of thanks. Lord, thank you for spirit. Speaking to me by your spirit, allowing me to hear what you wanted me to do. And Lord, sometimes I do miss it, right? But sometimes I do get it. And I'm able to initiate and produce that work that he wants me to do. He doesn't want us just to begin with faith and grace. He wants us to continue and not do life on our own best efforts. Look at verses 6 through 9. Here, Paul brings up, a huge part of the discussion. In verse 6, he says, even as, what's the next word? Abraham. He brings up someone that is very important. He says, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for what? For righteousness. And he says this, know ye. I I want you to not be confused. I don't want you to misunderstand. He says, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. We're going to talk about more of that in a minute. He says, And the Scripture foreseeth that God would justify the heathen through what? Through faith. And then it says, Preached before the gospel unto Abraham. It was preached even in the day of Abraham. And this is what it sounded like. In thee shall all nations be blessed. How many of you glad salvation does not exclude anyone? Salvation is for all nations. There's no one that is excluded. So it says in verse 9, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Paul's continuing his thoughts here, and as we put it in our own words today, not only free to continue in faith, but they're free to continue by letting go. There's some things that we need to let go of. There's some things that we need to step forward in in faith, but there's some things we need to let go of. We're going to talk about this for just a few minutes. In verse 6, he talks about two different types of righteousness. He talks about the one that we accomplish with our own efforts, but then he says there's a righteousness accounted to us by the work of God when we, the key word is, believe. Remember the, the phrase there that said, Abraham believed God. Can you say those three words? Abraham believed God. What are you believing him for? Not just salvation. There's much more to believe him for. If we're to live by faith, then there's something else that I have to use my faith for. What is that step of obedience that God is asking of you? Is God asking you to step forward in that faith to trust him with your tithe? Is God asking you to step forward with that step of faith to witness? 
Is God asking you to step forward with that step of, of faith to, to fix what's happening in your marriage or in a relationship with your kids? Is there something that God is asking you to step forward with to use your faith, to believe? If God accounted Abraham as righteous, then that is how Abraham should account for himself. Many times we do not see ourselves this way, and I want to rephrase that statement and say if God accounted us righteous, then we should account for ourselves as being righteous. Many times we do not see ourselves as this way, and I believe it's because Satan does not want us to live in that faith, does not want us to walk in that faith, does not want us to walk in that confidence. He doesn't want us to walk in the way that Jesus sees us. This isn't a pretend kind of look of what I'm supposed to be in front of God, that I am truly, really righteous in Jesus Christ, not myself. The thought is this, let go of your righteousness. Can I, can I ask you to do that today? To let go of your righteousness and see yourself accounted righteous in Jesus Christ. Verse 7 talks about this same, this same process of Abraham was made righteous by faith. He believed God, and he was, was the father of Abraham, the father of faith. You could say the little phrase there in the, the verse that says, are the children of Abraham. There's a strong emphasis from Paul here to the Jewish Christian who tried to make the Gentiles to seem like they were not as, as important as, as the Jew. Have you ever came across someone who feels like they're superior to you? Can you say, oh, man. You know, you come across that person and they just think they're superior than you. And he says, there is no superiority. There is no Jew that's greater than a Gentile. I want you to see that, that, we're, that we're all connected to Abraham, not by genetics and not by works, but the link that we're connected by is by faith. Can you say faith? We're connected to Abraham. Listen to me. Look at me. You are connected yourselves to Abraham by faith. I don't know if you know a whole lot about Abraham, but when you study and you get into uh, his life, you are directly connected to Abraham. Does that not encourage you this morning? Can you say amen? You are directly connected to Abraham and the promise of it. I want us to see a couple of things there in a moment. But there is no superiority. The, the link is faith. A thought to ponder here, and this is maybe for our young people and our kids that are in the worship service today. You see that when people believe um, they believe God accepts them because they come from a Christian family. God doesn't just accept you because you come from a Christian family. Think about this. God is a father, not a grandfather. So you have to make him, it's your faith that makes him your father. I want to encourage our young people, our young people, make sure he is your father. Make sure it is your faith. Make sure it's not just your faith for salvation, but your multiple steps of faith and believing as Abraham believed. Are the children of God, this, this same, the same emphasis is uh, from Paul here, that they are the children of Abraham. They are not a second-class Christian. They are the same as the Jew. You see, Paul in verse 8 refers to the Scripture as almost a person that foresees or preaches. And you can say this, that Paul believed that when the Scripture spoke, God spoke. Did God speak to you this week, church? I was a little bit light this morning. Did God speak to you this week, church? He spoke to you because God works speak. When God's word speaks, he speaks directly to you. God's word speaks when we read it. Paul is saying here the scripture is the heart and the soul of God. Being right with God through faith. In verse 9, as we looked at this, Paul was writing to, to the Galatians to respond to them and to remember that the law of Moses is important. They had the law of Moses for about 1,500 years. Everybody say that's a long time. It's a long time, man. Generation after generation, all programmed, do life by the law, do life by the law, and now we're changing it up. But I want you to notice something. Paul says, okay, here's Moses, but 430 years before Moses was who? Abraham. And I want to, he, said, he goes to the point of Abraham, and he's trying to drive home this point of, of this, is that we live under the law of grace, 
because many of them were struggling to break away from the law of Moses. Can we say this together, that faith lived before the law of Moses? Did not Abraham live by faith, church? And so faith was before the law. And so I want us to see what Paul is really going after here is this, is that God's plan of redemption didn't start with the law, but it began with God's covenant promise to Abraham. You see the heart of that? It's not law, it's the promise. Everybody say the promise. The promise that was given to Abraham, that is where it started. It didn't start with the law. Law brings clarity, yes. But what happened was it was the covenant of the promise. How many of you have had major promises given to you from someone and they fulfilled them? Can you say amen? I've had a promise fulfilled, but we've all had a promise broken. But God says, my Abraham promise will never be broken. I began with this covenant of promise. So in, 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 in kind of summary of that thought, I want to say this. We need to let go and we need to lean into grace. There's some things we need to let go of and we need to lean into grace. They were, they were holding on to the law. They were holding on to their righteousness. They were holding on to a lot of different things. And you are not superior and I am not superior. We are all just children of God and we're stepping out in faith and we're believing God and so we are connected to the promise of Abraham. Third thing is this, verses 10 through 14. We're free to continue. I want to give you the answer to that in just a moment, but I want you to see the verses first. Verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under, what's the next two words? The curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So he says, all, all things, and you got to do all of these things. Verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. No man is made right before God by keeping the law in the sight of God. It is evident. Everybody say it's evident. And that next phrase, this is the one I want you to hold on to this week. The just shall live by faith. Can you say that with me? The just shall live by faith. As I kept looking at that phrase, I was like, God, help me to understand that phrase more. And as you look at these next couple of verses, it brings some more um, insight to it. And we want to talk about this. It says, the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Here's some more insight. Here it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of who? The blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentile. Are you a Gentile this morning? You are. That we are the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through, and what's the last word? faith. So Paul is saying here that we are under the curse. God never intended the law to be the way that we find our approval before God. God never intended for us to uh, find our approval before God by keeping the law, but no, he, he made this, and when he made the law, he also gave an atoning sacrifice along the sacrificial system looking forward to what Jesus would accomplish on the cross. It's important to see the word all and do here. Uh, for God to approve you on the basis of the law, you first had to do it. You couldn't just know it. You couldn't just love it. You couldn't just teach it. You couldn't just want it. You had to actually do it. And secondly, you had to do it um, in all things, not some things, not after you're 18 or not after you're 40 years old, but you had to do it all the time in every age. And in verse 11 and 12, there's a very specific verse that is quoted here in Habakkuk 2.4. God is, is quoting in the, in the New Testament three different times this phrase that we looked at, the just shall live by faith. In Romans 1.17, I think this is so cool, the emphasis in this particular chapter is on the word faith. So I'm going to read the, the, the phrase, and I want you to yell out faith. The just shall live by faith. That's where the emphasis was in Romans chapter 1.17. When you go to Hebrews 10.38, it was on a different word, and that was the emphasis of live. So I want you to shout that, out, that one out. It says, the just shall by faith. In then Galatians 3.11, the emphasis was put on the, uh, the word just. And so the what? The just shall live by faith. This word redeemed. This word just. The word just meaning approved. Everybody say approved. 
to be just or approved of God or before God, you have to do it in a life of faith. So the just live by faith. And so if you're going to be approved of God or justified before God, you're going to need to use your what? Your faith. Not just for salvation, but in your daily walk with Him. And like we said from the beginning, Satan is going to try to keep you from using your faith as you walk with God. If if you use it for salvation, that's great. But now I'm going to try to stop you because look at this word redeemed. Redeemed or just or justified. Uh, buying back or purchasing out of. I want you to catch this this morning. It isn't just about rescuing. It's paying the price of the rescue. See, redeem comes from uh, the practice of ancient warfare. If I can reflect with you a little bit about this, uh, uh, if you read about this, it says that the battle of the victors was to capture the defeated, right? Keep the defeated until those who, who they originally came from want to buy them back. And so the, the ones who were maybe not as important, they would sell them as slaves. But those who were important, they would wait until and hold them for a ransom until the, to the homeland had raised enough funds to re, the required price to set them free. See, the process was called redemption. Everybody say redemption. That's the process, and the price was called the ransom. Even this, I found, the image took root in other areas when a slave uh, had his freedom purchased. When a slave would have his freedom purchased, he would either have a relative to do this or he would diligently, diligently work to raise the money himself, and this was called redemption. Sometimes the transaction, I, I never knew this, sometimes the transaction took place at the temple. And a record of that transaction was carved in a wall so everyone would know that this former slave is now redeemed. He is set free. I want us to be set free. Do you want that? Let's live in that freedom of faith. Let's live in that freedom of of living in His grace. The phrase here, the blessing of Abraham might come, might come upon the Gentiles. Jesus received this curse, which we deserved, and He did not. And I want you to see this as well, that we that we could receive the blessing of Abraham. Can you say the blessing of Abraham? The covenant promise that we could receive the blessing of Abraham, which we did not deserve, but God deserved, and we did not. He took away the curse. And he gave us a blessing which we did not deserve. I don't want us to lose the weight of the blessing of Abraham. A lot of times life is confusing and, 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 and we're totally distracted. And we lose sight of the promise that we've been given, the blessing that we've been given. And it's the law of grace. See, he took away the curse and he gave us a blessing we did not deserve. This is so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. If you have the Holy Spirit this morning, can you say amen? The blessing of the Holy Spirit is ours, Jesus. He's the one who gave it. It was our faith to trust in him, and not the principle of the law, but the promise of receiving from him. Jesus took our curse. Last thought under this morning is, We are blessed to live by faith because Jesus took the the curse. We are blessed to live by faith. In verses 15 through 18, we're not going to take a lot of time. It's kind of a review of the first 14 verses, but I want to finish with these couple highlights. And going into, I guess I should clarify, that particular thought we were on there with free to continue is free to continue uncursed. And then the next thought is this, and this clarification that he brings to the end, we're free to continue in God's promise. Let's let's continue to walk in his promise. What does that look like in verse 15? Notice what he says, the first word is brethren. Writing to them and telling them his heart of hearts to to his family, to his church family, to those that he loves. The inheritance was offered on the basis of promise, And God's promises always stand firm. He wanted them to be clarified that this was not something on the basis of the law, but was on the basis of the promise. That's where it began. 
If you look at verse 18, it says, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of, what's the next word? It's no more of promise, verse 18. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. When you study out this word gave in verse 18, that's an ancient Greek word that I can't pronounce, but it comes from a, a root word of charis, which means grace. It says the word gave is actually the same as grace. God's giving to Abraham was a free giving of grace. God's giving to you and me is a free giving of grace. The word is, is, a, is in a perfect tense, which means that it is permanent. Can you say permanent? Nothing can take away the promise of Abraham. It's permanent. There's nothing that can take away. Is there very much in life that's permanent, y'all? Is there much that's permanent? Yes or no? There's not much that's permanent. But let's celebrate what is permanent. And he says the permanent thing is, is the perfect gift, the promise of, of Abraham. It's the free giving of his grace. In verses 19 through 25, as we highlight a couple of things here, I want us to see the free to continue with clarity. A lot of times we don't have uh, the, all the answers and we need some clarity. We need someone to, to explain. And, and this, this thought that we talked about in verse 11, the just shall live by faith, he's bringing more clarity to this. And in verse uh, 16, just, just above it, he talks about thy seed. And then in verse 19, he says, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come. The seed that's being spoken of here is Jesus. Till Jesus should come to whom the promise was made and as were ordained by angels in the hand of the medi- mediator. Now the mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Look at verse 21. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid that. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. He says, if it was by the law, then Jesus would not have had to come. And this promise of Abraham would make no sense. But it says in verse 22, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise of faith by Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Jesus is that seed. In verses 22 through 25, the law of Moses is prepared, has prepared us to come to Jesus, the reason why it was given. It's revealed, it has revealed a couple things, God's character, but also has exposed our sin. So you could say the purpose of the law of Moses is fulfilled when we stop trying to justify ourselves. Tell the person next to you, stop justifying yourself. Sometimes hard to hear those words, isn't it? Even then when we might say them casually in a service, many times we act on those words and we justify ourselves instead of realizing the purpose of the law of Moses was fulfilled. And we can come to Jesus by faith. I want us to see this little phrase here in verse 26, 27, 28. For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one. Can you say all one? For all one in Christ Jesus. That if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. You are connected directly to Abraham and the blessing and the promise and heirs according to that promise. In verse 28, as it talks about, we've been baptized into Christ and have put on Christ. A lot of times... We're pretty sufficient with just being splashed, we're splashed with a little bit of Jesus or being splashed or um, sprinkled with a little bit of Jesus or dipping a little bit into Jesus, but to be totally immersed into Jesus, that's what he wants. He wants our lives to be completely immersed, just like in baptism that we'll see this morning. When someone is totally immersed in the water, what do you actually see when they're totally immersed? Do you just see a form underneath there? You see mostly what? Mostly the water. 
Water in the New Testament and in the Scripture is, is a um, representation of God's Spirit. And when someone is immersed in Jesus, all you really see is the Spirit of God. Isn't that what we long for? Is that God would use our life? You know, in verse 28 and 29, it talked about Paul clarifying here that there's no difference between the Jew or the Greek. There's no difference between the bond or free. And sometimes we draw lines, don't we? We draw lines in places that they shouldn't be drawn. And he says in Jesus Christ, there's no more lines, church of Galatia. Everybody say, there's no more lines. Stop throwing dividing lines. He said, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Sadly, sometimes we do draw those lines. And then our last thought this morning, I'm going to ask the instruments to come and make their way. I want you to skip back to Galatians chapter 2. Because I feel like this really brings total conclusion to chapter 3. And even though it's given before 3, I think it helps me to understand it. As it says in verse 19 of chapter 2, For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I want you to notice those last words, that I might live unto God. What will this week look like because of your faith? What will this week look like because you believed God? What will this week look like because I believed God or I walked in faith? And then this is the verse I want you to try to memorize. It gets a little bit hard at the end. It was one that I memorized when I was younger, so it's a little bit easier for me to refresh on it and remember it. But he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And look at the last verse. I do not frustrate. Everybody say, I do not frustrate. (laughs) I do not frustrate means to set aside or disregard. I do not... Frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I want you to notice those last words. I'm crucified with Christ, but I do not frustrate or set aside the grace of God. A couple final things to to give to you this morning. Paul tells us that what makes the difference here. A conscious decision to never set aside the grace of God. Here's Here's the funnel. He says, I want you to never set aside the grace of God, a conscious decision this morning to never set aside the promise or the the promise of Abraham, the covenant of Abraham, the grace of God. And here's the thought. A life of faith is a life that holds on to grace. A life of faith is a life that holds on to grace. Can you say that with me? A life of faith is a life that holds on to grace. I don't believe you this morning. A life of faith is a life that holds on to grace. Will you hold on to and will I hold on to grace this week? Will the just, will the approved, will they walk by faith? As Stace begins to play, I want you to just see a simple visual this morning. Many times I don't see myself like this. This is just. The just shall walk (laughs) by faith. Do you see yourself like this? Because the last thing Satan wants you to do is to see yourself like this because this looks like something that can be used by God. Would you agree with me? This can be used by God, but God says, this is you. This is how I see you. The just shall walk by faith. You can be used by God because you're clean with God. You're pure with God no matter what your past mistakes may be. This is who you are. Can you say amen? This is who you are. The just shall live by faith. A life of faith is a life that holds on to grace. Is this how you'll walk this week? Will you have grace in your hand? As you walk with him, will you walk with your life of faith? Will you be walking with grace that holds on to grace? Can I ask you this morning as a church, look at me this morning. 
Let's walk a life that holds on to grace. Let's live in that freedom of the promise of Abraham. We're not under the law. In fact, I, I really believe in my heart of hearts, I'll have to ask Paul myself when we get there, but when he says, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, I think he is crucifying the law of Moses, and he's living under the law of grace in his head. That's my, that's my, my two cents, okay? He's, he's being crucified to the law of Moses, and he's living in the law of grace, and he's holding on to grace, and he's The just shall live by faith. Can you say it one more time? The just shall live by faith. Let's live by faith. Let's not just live, but let's live approved of God. The last thing this morning, the Holy Spirit within us accomplishes through us what we never could. I want you to hear that this morning. This particular week, this week as you The just shall walk by faith as you walk by faith, holding on to that grace that the Holy Spirit within us will accomplish through us what we never could. And this morning, there's some of you that have never taken a hold of grace. You're looking at grace from a distance. You've never trusted Christ. There's never been a moment where you've deliberately asked Him to be your Savior. And you're looking at the grace and you're saying, man, that looks good. Everybody say, that looks good. Man, that looks good. I would like to look like that before God approved of God. And sometimes we come right up to the grace of God and then we pull away. And this morning, maybe you've never trusted his grace and you've never picked it up and the just shall live by faith. This morning, reach out and pick up that grace and say, I want the grace of God on my life. I want the unmerited favor of God on my life. I want his grace and his mercy. So the decision this morning, what will you do? Will you see yourself as righteous? Choosing to see what God sees, the just, that's who you are. And shall you live by faith? Where am I trusting God to use me this week? If you've never picked up God's grace, will you pick it up this morning? In this moment of decision and response, would you bow your heads, close your eyes for a moment? I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand this morning with your heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm going to ask that this morning you'd step out right now. If God has spoken to you, you say, you know what, Matt? I've been seeing myself in a much different light. I've been seeing myself as not pure before God, not righteous before God, but I've been seeing myself as not worthy. And I need to start walking in faith and holding on to grace. Would you step out this morning and say, God, help me as I walk with you, that I would see myself as you see me, that I would see myself as just, that I would see myself as approved before you. Would you step out this morning? Our church family, would you step out this morning, whatever God's spoken to you about, would you come and make a prayer here at the altar? Would you pray there in your seat? I, I encourage you always to come to an altar to pray. Noah built altars. Moses built altars. Abraham built altars. I think the church of today needs to build altars. And there's one here for us to use, and I'm asking you to to use that in your daily walk, in your daily life. This morning, maybe you've set down grace and you need to pick it back up. I don't know if you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus to be your Savior, that you'd let someone take the Bible this morning and show you the Scripture about how that you could trust in His grace that you'll be approved and accepted of God in your walk with Him. If you say, Matt, that's me this morning. I, I don't think I've ever asked Jesus to be my Savior, and I have questions about that. Would you just slip up your hand this morning? I'm looking on my right-hand side. Would you just lift up your hand and say, Matt, pray for me? Anyone on the left-hand side would say, Matt, pray for me? I, don't, I have questions about salvation. I have questions about eternal life. Anyone like that this morning? I'm going to make a prayer. I'm going to ask you to worship this morning, but I'm going to ask you to pray this morning. Maybe you need to pray for yourself. Maybe you need to pray for someone else. I don't know what God would have you to do, but would you be obedient this morning to step out that we would walk by faith in his grace this morning? Lord, we love you today. We praise you today. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for Paul, God, and thank you that... um, He was able to go to that wilderness in Arabia and learn all that you had him to learn. And he was able to write these 
these uh, letters to the churches, God, to give clarity to them. And if those churches needed clarity, I know we need clarity. And so, God, I thank you for the morning. I thank you for your word. I'm glad you always speak through your word. And it doesn't matter who the messenger is, God, you always speak. May we live by faith this week. May we uh, be just and approved before you. May we uh, do that by doing what Abraham did. And when Abraham believed God, it was accounted unto him as righteousness, approved of you. So God, may we be obedient in our walk to you this week. Uh, Use us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.